This recording is the third example in a series on using differentiation by first principles to find the derivative of a function. Here, if we want to find the derivative of a function f of x, the derivative f dashed x is the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. So let's have a look at how we would apply this method to find the derivative of the function f of x equals the square root of x using differentiation by first principles. Now first of all we need obviously to work out f of x plus h. Now f of x plus h, what will it be in this case? Well f of x is just the square root of x so f of x plus h will be the square root of x plus h. So now let's put this information into our formula for finding the derivative. f dashed x will be the limit as h approaches 0 of square root of x plus h minus square root of x divided by h. At this stage, in this form, evaluating this limit will not work. So we need to simplify this in some way. How can we simplify this one though? It doesn't look immediately obvious. And really if we're going to simplify this, the only part of it it looks like we might have any hope of simplifying or rewriting perhaps in some useful form is this bit here. Square root of x plus h minus square root of x. And let's just look at that a bit further. And an interesting mathematical result that can help us here is that the square root of x plus h minus the square root of x. If you think about what would happen, so this is a bit of an aside from what we've got for f dashed x at the moment, but we'll come back to that. If you imagine multiplying that by square root of x plus h plus square root of x, let's think about what would happen. And if we do that, square root of x plus h times square root of x plus h, if we expanded these brackets, would give us x plus h. We would also get a term square root of x times square root of x plus h. And we would be subtracting that. But we would also then be adding it again when we look at the first term here and the last term here. And finally, we would also have minus the square root of x times the square root of x, which would give us minus x. And this would actually simplify down a fair bit. Those two there just combine to give 0. So that leaves us with x plus h minus x, but x minus x will also give 0. So therefore, this whole expression here is actually just equal to h. That is, the square root of x plus h minus the square root of x times the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x, that whole thing is actually just equal to h. But the question is, while this is an interesting result, does it actually help with what we want to do? I've just rewritten that result we just found in red. But does that actually help us to simplify our expression for f dashed x? Certainly it looks similar in some ways, doesn't it? It's got this bit, square root of x plus h minus square root of x, and it's also got h. So what's really interesting about this is we can rearrange this to get something that is a bit simpler to work with. In particular, if we rearrange this, we find that square root of x plus h minus square root of x, so I'm still just looking at our result in red here at the moment, if we divide both sides of this by h, then, and if we also divide both sides by square root of x plus h plus square root of x, rearranging gives us this result that the square root of x plus h minus the square root of x divided by h is 1 divided by the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x. In other words, going back to our evaluation of our derivative, f dashed x will become the limit as h approaches 0 of this. 
since we've just seen that this circled expression is equivalent to what we've got here. So therefore, we can rewrite f dashed x equals the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 divided by square root of x plus h plus the square root of x. So that looks a bit simpler, but does it actually help us to evaluate this limit and hence find the derivative? And the good news is, yes, it does. As originally one of the problems we had is that having h on the denominator here meant we would end up with division by 0, which is undefined. So that did not allow us to find an expression for the limit. But in this case, we will not have division by 0 if we substitute in h equals 0. So we can now find the limit and hence a derivative. In particular, now if we substitute in h equals 0, we will end up with 1 divided by the square root of x plus 0 plus the square root of x. That's just giving us f dashed x equals 1 divided by the square root of x plus the square root of x, which is 1 divided by 2 times the square root of x. And in index form, you could also write this if you preferred as a half x to the negative a half. So that is the third example of using differentiation by first principles.